Sean Biography, George MacDonald, 1985. American cities were struggling with drug abuse, alcoholism, and a growing army of homeless people. For business executive George MacDonald, the human misery was too much to bear. They say those people who were crazy enough to think they can change the world, do. And I put George in that category. All too often, people will see a, a difficult circumstances and will say, gee, that's terrible, and uh, make some type of minor contribution and walk away. George doesn't do that. Uh, George is able to see a problem and say, what do I have to do to solve that problem? He was a successful businessman, and he said one day he was coming out of a $200 lunch, and he had a step over somebody. And he said to himself, how can I do this? How can I be coming out of $200 lunches and literally be stepping over people in doorways? George answered his own question. He couldn't. He skipped the expensive lunches and started feeding people in the Grand Central Terminal. I think back to the, uh, to the mid-80s when he went to Grand Central every day and fed the uh, homeless. And they wanted more than just food. They wanted an opportunity to, to work and make a living. George McDonald was helping people who had no homes and very little hope. Everybody's going to eat. Everybody's going to eat because I'm coming right back. One Christmas day, an older lady that he used to feed, the police had two older people out from Grand Central. She froze to death. And she was like a Jane Doe, because nobody knew her name. And that's how he started the Doe Fund. The Doe Fund was designed to give homeless people more than a sandwich and coffee. It would nourish their dignity with a real job. The essence of the Doe Fund, I think, is this indomitable belief in the spirit of the individual, that anybody who's ready, willing, and able to work will be given the opportunity to be self-sufficient and lead a productive life. When you're down on your luck, you're living out on the street and you get used to people walking by you and stepping over you. When somebody stops and recognizes you as a human being, it gives people a light at the end of the tunnel. George provided that light. George McDonald's desire to help others was instilled in his younger days in New Jersey, where he grew up in less than idyllic circumstances. George was poor growing up. His mom died when he was very young. His father had left before that, and he was in many ways on his own. He went to Catholic school, and I think that was a big influence on him, the nuns. He talks about that a lot, and the effect that they had on him, and I think that faith has uh, helped him do what he does today. After college, George settled into a comfortable life as an executive in the fashion industry. But of course, comfortable was not what he was seeking. George would be a modern-day uh, Don Quixote. He's prepared to tilt at windmills, and he wins more fights than he loses. He's grown the Doe Fund uh, from an organization uh, that was struggling at one time to really one of the most successful homeless-to-work programs in the country. His Doe Fund started small, then won city contracts to renovate low-income housing. The workers were men who had been homeless and destitute. Men such as Nazarene Griffin. The life I have now, I could never repay George for the opportunity. I mean, you're talking about someone that was destined to die that has a life uh, beyond its wildest dreams today. George and Harriet McDonald started another project, Ready, Willing, and Able. The workers clean streets dressed in their distinctive blue uniforms. People don't want to know about homelessness. They, they want to pretend it's invisible. George allowed me the opportunity when I was living in the doorway, eating out of the garbage cans with nowhere to turn, and they took me in. The Doe Fund and its sister projects were hugely successful, surprising everyone except George McDonald. Everybody said the man was crazy, that you can't give a homeless guy who uses drugs money and a job. They're not going to do it. They're not going to work. They're not going to, you know, and he did it. Kind of underpinning all this is the world's biggest optimist. He believes the people um, at their core are valuable and, uh, and will succeed if given a chance. George and Harriet have expanded their focus. They're now trying to help convicts who are leaving prison and returning to the streets. 
over time we realized that there was an enormous crossover between homelessness and people coming out of prison. If we can't be an interim kind of employment for people and give them opportunity to fulfill their potential, we will never break this cycle. George McDonald has obviously done far more than touch lives. He has transformed them. I could never personally thank you enough for uh, helping me change my life, and I wish you nothing but success. You show me that somebody like myself can change their life around and be a productive member of society, which I am today, means a real lot to me. I hope that you continue uh, in your passion and helping uh, all the folks that you help. George, congratulations. Thanks so much for all you've done, not only for me, but for the thousands of people uh, that you have, uh, have helped. I'd like to thank you for being an example uh, for teaching me what it takes uh, to be a citizen and for being one of the greatest Americans I know. St. John Spirit of Service Award honoree, George McDonald. I'm uh, honored and humbled to be in the company of great Americans like Father Harrington and Coach Lou and Mary Karnaseka and Mary and Joseph Schwartz. I'm thankful tonight to St. John's for the Spirit of Service Award and also for the opportunity to say that the past 25 years of my service has often been guided by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and the Sisters of St. Joseph who taught me that there's more than one use for a ruler. <laughs> when I walked into Grand Central Terminal, I was only armed with a desire to serve. Now, all these years later, I can honestly say to you here tonight that the grace of God has been with us every step of the way. Everything I was taught as a young man was and remains true. We have helped thousands of people whom society has given up on. Drug addicts, high school dropouts, formerly imprisoned, enter the mainstream and become responsible, self-sufficient citizens. It was my faith that allowed me to believe that this was possible. I want to thank Tom McInerney for his incredible generosity for suggesting that I receive this award. And the Doe Fund's very first supporter, Jerome Belson and his lovely wife, Maxine. Harriet and I love you, Jerry. Trust in God, St. Vincent said. Trust in him, I beg you, and you will have the fulfillment of what your heart desires. Thank you so much. Tomorrow, our work begins anew, but tonight, Tonight, I have a full heart. Thank you. Thank you very much.